Mr. Stavros? Here. Mr. Temple? Mr. Tripp? Here. Dr. Zachariah? Here. Ms. Parker? Ms. Parker? Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Okay, great. Um, we'll call the meeting to order and just want to briefly reiterate uh, the comments that were being made before we formally started that we're very pleased at the, uh, uh, the way in which the process works and with the caliber of the um, applicants that we had, I too was very impressed and enjoyed um, the three or four days of interviews that I had since I had three universities, one of which was FSU. But um, again, I want to reiterate that I have um, had one meeting with the governor's office and then a follow-up telephone conversation uh, uh, to report on the, the people that we thought would bank very good trustees uh, as well as Board of Governors uh, members um, and passed all of that information on not only through the governor's office directly but also through Dean Colson. So um, I'm hoping that there will be uh, a chance for some of these people that we could not select to be selected that way. Um, so with that, I'm not going to belabor it. I'd ask Dr. Zachariah to give the committee report um, for the committee meeting held this morning at 10 o'clock. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Some of you were not on the uh, committee call this morning. So I'd like to take a few minutes to discuss the process we followed, locating the applicants, reviewing the applications, interviewing the candidates, and bringing the names forward to you today for your approval. The trustee and nominating committee and the leadership of then Chair Charlie Edwards developed our, appointed, our appointment process. The committee looked at models used by other governing bo boards, including North Carolina, to appoint trustees. Mr. Edwards worked with our staff and recommended the process, which was approved at our board meeting in January of 2007. Now, according to a, according to a process, uh, the process, the committee announced on July 15, 2009, that we were looking to fill 21 trustee vacancies that would occur in January 6, 2010. Our announcement was widely publicized through media releases letters to university board chairs and presidents, communications with board of trustees liaisons, and a notice posted on our website. The applications were due by August 28, 2009. During this period, we received over approximately 200 applications. We received over 95 applications to FSU vacancies, and on average about 11, 11 applications on other universities. As we did with the FIU vacancy last summer, I divided the committee into two or three committee members who are assigned to review applications for specific assigned universities. <coughs> Most of the members of the committee had two universities for which they were reviewing the applications. Several members of the committee had three universities. The committee also received verbal and written communications and nominations from university board chairs and from university presidents. On September 3, 2009, the committee members received all the applications submitted by the universities assigned to them. Each member was asked to review the applications by September 25th to submit to our corporate secretary the names of applicants they were recommending for interviews. The corporate secretary compiled a complete list of interviews and advised all the members of the university teams of all the candidates selected for interviews. Between September 29 and October 9, 2009, members of the committee contacted the selected candidates and conducted independent telephone interviews with them. Members also, were, also made other inquiries to assist their independent deliberations of the background and qualification of the applicants. Members of each university team were asked to give corporate secretary the applicants recommended for appointment the board on a ranked order. If the ranking was not clear, as she requested clarification of two priorities of, of, of the team members. The names and candidates recommended to fill the vacancies for each university board of trustees 
Uh, individuals identify with the committee's agenda. We have a large number of well-qualified persons apply, and it was it's a difficult process. Narrow this remarkable pool down to two candidates for each institution. I want to thank again the members of the committee for the careful and thorough review of all applicants uh, for the trustee position. It was a time-consuming process, and I appreciate the thoughtfulness of all of you here to this very important task, appointing trustees to our university boards. Through this process, we have assembled a huge talent pool of, pe uh, pool of people interested in our universities and the state university system. I encourage the universities to invite these applicants to become involved. There are opportunities for service in the alumni boards, foundation boards, and many other university activities. These individuals have already demonstrated their interest by applying to these positions. I intend to encourage these outstanding people to come back to us again so we will have another class of trustees to appoint next year. Again, I want to thank Mikey for a great job done, and also a Chancellor Frank Brogan, who have, both of them have done a fantastic job in, in getting this job done. This morning, the committee reviewed the proposals of trustees, and I'd like to move. Uh, can I, uh, Madam Chair, can I move? All the universities at one time, or do you want me to move one university at a time? Well, um, I think you can do it either way, because if you're going to ask for comment, the people can comment uh, on the specific university they want to comment on. Okay. Uh, then, Madam Chair, I move the board approve the following individuals to serve on the Board of Trustees of the University of Florida. There's Marshall Chrysler the third, and Carolyn Roberts, and for the... Uh, and for the Florida State University, Mark Hillis and Margaret Rolanda. For uh, Florida a &M University, uh, uh, Marjorie Turnbull. And uh, for the University of South Florida, Brian D. Lamb and Harold Mullis, Jr. For the Florida Atlantic University, Anthony K. Barber and David S. Ferrer. For the University of West Florida, Stephen Ricks and Benita C. Terry, for the University of Central Florida, Raymond Gilly and Daniel A. Webster, for, the, for Florida International University, Michael M. Adler and Joseph L. Carujo, University of North Florida, A. Hugh Green and Oscar Manez, and uh, uh, Florida Gulf Coast University, and H. Hamilton, uh, Robbie B. Rakoff, and uh, and you know, uh, as a trustee of the University of North, uh, New College, Florida, William R. Johnson and Felice C. Shulan. All right. Is that is that a motion to accept the recommendation of the committee? Yes, madam. Uh, yes, madam. This is a recommendation. This is a motion to approve, uh, as an, as uh, as I mentioned, the names of the universities. And I second motion? the motion. I get you. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion from other members of the board? Any members of the board? <clears throat> Madam Chair, this is John Barnes. Yes. I, I just want to um, thank every everyone on the committee. I, I understand what a what a time uh, consuming project this was, and I think it's it's wonderful that we're giving these trustees um, an the universities rather an opportunity to know who their trustees will be so that they will have the ample time to prepare them um, for the new year in January. So I, I know that this, this pro I know we've done this a thousand times, but I just wanted to say thank you uh, for everyone's hard work in, in this process. Well, thank you very much for that, John. And we haven't, we've done it a thousand times, but on a much smaller scale. This was the first time that we're having uh, a turnover of half of the trustees uh, pretty much on each of the boards because the governor's got as, at least as many to fill as we do. Madam, so, Chair, this is, Madam Chair, this is Stan Marshall. I have a suggestion that I want to submit, but it doesn't need to come now before the vote. I'd like to make it sometime, though, before we do it. All right. Is there anything anybody else has wants to say about either the process, the, uh, the recommendations, or otherwise? Madam Chair, uh, this, this is Stavros. Uh, we've done a lot of thanking for people. I want to thank uh, Governor Zachariah for leadership in this, and the process I think has been wonderful, and uh, he followed through uh, quite well. And uh, I'm very proud of what this 
what the Board of Governors and what the nominating committee has done. Madam Chair, this is Ann. I'd also like to say a special thanks to Mikey because I've been getting emails from her at all kinds of hours, and I know she has put forth just a tremendous effort trying to keep this coordinated on the staff level. Uh, yes, uh, Mikey was there to answer when we needed extra phone calls, phone numbers. Uh, really, uh, this has been an outstanding process, and uh, I am very proud to be part of the Board of Governors to uh, come up with this this process and getting good trustees for our universities. Yes, I, I uh, concur in all those comments. Anything else from anyone? Madam Chair, this is Frank. Um, I, I'd like to make a comment, but I'll withhold until after the board has uh, has taken their vote. Okay, I'm going to call for the vote unless somebody has something else. Okay, so many as favor the motion to adopt the recommendation of the nominating committee uh, for the new trustees at our 11 institutions, as as uh, stated by Dr. Zachariah. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, show them un unanimously adopted. Very good. Okay, um, Chancellor Brogan. Thank you. Comments? Thank you, Chairwoman. I'll be brief. I, I too, and some of this will be redundant, want to thank Dr. Zachariah for his leadership on this one. He spent a great deal of time overseeing this process. Uh, and Mikey has already been mentioned. Uh, she was an incredible uh, uh, support for everybody during this process. Uh, as well as Vicki Shirley on the legal side of this to make sure that we maintained all of the appropriate activities that would keep us on course and do it in the right way. Uh, but I also wanted to comment on the system, and someone mentioned this earlier. The nice thing about this, because it was on a grand scale, is uh, that it, it will really provide us a high quality process going forward. So the next time and the next time we have to do this, whether it's one member or another 21 members, I really believe we've created an outstanding process that will serve all of us and the state very well uh, for future appointments. Uh, some of the members may have signed on a little late. Um, we are going to be, as you may have heard some of you, are going to be creating uh, special letters to send out to those who were uh, applicants. Uh, most already received the letter, but we want to create one then for those who are interviewed. Uh, and, of course, and obviously for those who were selected uh, today. And that letter will also include, uh, we hope, some orientation information uh, to make certain, as we mentioned on the call this morning, that we can dovetail our efforts for orientation for new members with the local universities mm -hmm. and both uh, see that they receive orientation on the local issues as well as on uh, the statewide issues and the, the activities of the Board of Governors and the relationship between the two. So we're going to be working to coordinate that in the very near future as well. The chairwoman and others have also mentioned that we will continue to work with the governor's office uh, on their appointments coming up to those local boards uh, uh, in January and uh, provided them, I think, with an outstanding stable of potential applicants from this process going forward. So to all of you again, lastly, uh, who went through this process, and it was an amazing process of consideration, review, interview, and finalization. Uh, it is one of the most thorough and I think efficient processes I've ever been through uh, regarding appointments. Job well done to everybody. And I say that as the new guy on the block. Outstanding job. Thanks, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you, uh, Chancellor Brogan. Uh, Governor Marshall. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I've noted that Florida State University has something like 100 uh, applicants submit applications of interest. And while that may reflect a certain uh, healthful response on their part, it seemed to me to impose a sizable load of time and labor on the part of the committee. If all 11 universities submitted that number, we'd have an unmanageable task. So I'm just suggesting that maybe there could be some way to uh, encourage the Alumni Association, which is where the invitation came from, to to uh, ask people to, to apply. Uh, there might be some way to qualify that. To you mean to target it a little, a little bit better? Pardon me? You mean to target it a little bit yeah, better? Yeah, to, to qualify and to, uh, to make their invitation a little bit more selective. Uh, I don't know how we do that, but I think there must be some way to have the Alumni Association, if they're going to do that again, be more selective about it. I, right, I agree. 
I agree because it was an extremely uh, difficult task. Yeah. But um, I, I also applaud the work of the administration who did um, spend a lot of time doing uh, research on most of these um, applicants so that it was helpful to us. Madam Chair, Norman Tripp, uh, could I speak to that? Sure. Uh, I object to it uh, because the part of the problem before was we weren't reaching out to the people in the state and in, in the southeast area and telling them that, you know, these positions were available. So now that uh, one university uh, was successful in, in really getting people to uh, have interest in, in the boards of trustee applications and to, and to go through the process, I don't think we should say, oh, gee, we're getting too many now. Uh, it, it just goes against what we were trying to do. Uh, this is Gus Stavros, if I can respond to Governor Tripp. Uh, I, I appreciate your comments, and, and you're right when it gets uh, to the point of saying that this should be open to everyone. But I think what, what, uh, uh, what's been requested is that they be more selective. In other words, uh, they can do some, some checking and selecting before they submit it to the Board of Governors. And I think that would make a lot of sense because uh, of the 100, uh, may I ask uh, those who had Florida State, how many did you finally come down to? Uh, uh, well, we interviewed 14. Okay. And then we narrowed down to seven, I think. And then we went through the ranking off the seven. You know, the process is some of the connected rose to the top, but there were some people, because I got phone calls from people, that, that actually were good, good people, some of them Florida State, uh, but they weren't connected. So I, Well, I, if you got the phone calls, I, I... I haven't finished. I just don't like the idea that now we're going to start getting selective about who in the state can make an application and be considered. I mean... This is Judy Solano. Might I offer a suggestion? Um, we often uh, have processes at the university where the application process is open and we encourage anyone and everyone to put in applications. Uh, but then we have, for instance, um, at the University of North Florida, we have five colleges. So we tell each of the colleges to to uh, do like a pre-screening of those who have applied. And uh, if a college has, say, um, three openings uh, for some kind of a position, we'll ask the college to submit um, six or eight possible candidates for those three openings. So we could do something like that, where if a university has, say, two openings, uh, the invitation could go out wide and far, and uh, anybody has a chance to put their application in, but we could ask the university, since these are their trustees, to do a pre-screening, and if they've got two openings, maybe send us only uh, six or eight possible candidates, the best uh, that they see in the bunch that they would like to advance for our consideration. Well, unfortunately for for that process would not work because the applications are actually to us and furthermore I think we owe it to the to the governance system to rely on a broader view than just the university's um, recommendations. Look, I think everybody's making good points, but what I was going to say to you, Governor Tripp, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but if you did receive calls, I hope that you pass the names on to Mikey because I didn't get any information about people that were being uh, recommended around uh, with respect to FSU except in um, a couple of cases, and those were directly from members of our board. Well, let me tell you what I, what I did. I told those people that there was a committee set up, that it was functioning very well, 
that, that committee members were assigned to review the applications, and I told them their applications would be fully reviewed, and, and that uh, I gave them the names, uh, and I said they could go on, they could go on our website and they, and they could see that, and, and that those people would, would be directing the, the names that were going to come to the committee, and so the process was in place. And I think what you did, you did screen them. You had, because you had 100 applications, let's say, you interviewed 14. So in, in effect, you, you were the screening process for our committee. And I think you did an excellent job. I think everybody did. And, and so it's part of the process of being a governor and being willing to serve on these committees that are so important. But, you know, I mean, it, the budget committee has ongoing things going all the time. This committee, it gets hit with a bump every now and then, but I think you handled it very well. But I don't like the idea that we're somehow going to have a, a, a system where we're not going to encourage the general public to be involved in, in our university system. Uh, may I uh, comment on that, Madam Chairman? Sure. Uh, as one of the, the people uh, going through those uh, many, many applicants, I, I found it a very uh, enjoyable, healthy exercise. Uh, many of the people I did not put on my list to interview because I didn't feel that they would at this time, for whatever reason, would would uh, would feel that need. However, there were people that that I see have much to, much to offer to the university system and to the state and to that university. So I think it's a, it was a healthy process, and though it did take a number of hours to read through those applicants, we all know some of them took longer than others, and, and we spent more time on some uh, over others. But I, I felt the process, it was lengthy. It was a time commitment. But as, as um, Governor Tripp just said, it's all a time commitment. And we're, and I, I, as one of the two going through them, I was not offended by the number or the length at all. I just thought it, I committed the time and read it and went through them. And, uh, and there were many people that I would have loved to interview because they were very interesting people, but that would not have been um, fair to those people. It might have encouraged them to think that I was going to recommend them when I didn't think that was the case. Very interesting people that took their time to apply. And, and that, I understand what Governor uh, Marshall is saying, and he makes a strong point. But on the other hand, it was, it was valuable to you, to us, and the Board of Governors, that, that many people are interested in our system. Madam Chair, I think these points are well made, and those are valuable experiences. But let me just point out the simple math. If all 11 universities responded at the same level that Florida State did, we would be dealing with 1,100 applications. If that's a manageable task, fine. Let's go forward with it. But if not, I suggest that the Chancellor consider this issue and, and think about a way, a way in which it might be addressed. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Gus Stavros. I think the discussion has been outstanding. I think uh, overall, the more people who have shown an interest will help the university system in Florida. I think that it's good to have people have that interest, and whatever comes out of this, uh, I'm sure it's going to be in the best interest of our universities. Okay, thank you all. Any, anybody have anything else? Um, I think, Frank, you want to mention very briefly about the uh, workshop with the Council of 100. Madam Chair, well, we have a Norman trip again. Have, can Frank uh, talk to the governor's office about getting uh, the replacement for uh, Governor Pappas? Yeah, I've talked to them at least 25 times, Norm. I, I've, already, uh, I've already done that, but I promised them that I would continue to have the conversation until that one is filled. Until what? Until it is filled. Yes, I had the conversation just yesterday. Somebody. We'll think it's time to uh, move to adjourn. <laughs> I hear music in the background. Yeah, I wanted to give a quick update on that workshop at the Council of 100 so people yeah. can begin to plan for it. Yeah, very quickly, and we've sent a memo out uh, to all of you, I believe, regarding the meeting as a reminder, but on November the 12th, uh, in Palm Beach County, uh, hosted at the Scripps Institute, 
uh, will be uh, a joint workshop of the State Board of Education, the Board of Governors, hosted by the Council of 100. And we have been working with uh, our friends in uh, the other delivery systems to make certain that we're putting together an agenda that will be that will be meaningful and also uh, solicit input from both boards on the direction uh, for the future as well as the business community. Uh, so it is a, a unique opportunity, I think, for us, unique being first of its kind, uh, to have a, a together dialogue with uh, both the SBE and the Board of Governors. So uh, if you need any more information, please don't hesitate to call us, uh, but that is on November the 12th. The leader has unmuted your line. Oh, we've got somebody. Oh, go we've got somebody on, on hold with this music. Who got themselves on hold with that awful stuff? Anyway, did everybody hear that? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, well, uh, this is all we've got today. We'll uh, be in touch, and thank you all very much for all your hard work. Thanks to you, Zach and Mikey and Vicky and the Chancellor and everybody that worked on this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Chair. Bye. Bye. Bye.